so um, again, so today's agenda, we're going to go through each standard that's listed in the ASR and look at the related MIS report or reports. Um, we'll look at each report to identify to find the information needed for required narratives. Some of it is self-explanatory, but some of it got to kind of dig a little deeper. And so we're going to show you those places. We're also going to look at the standards that don't have a related MIS report and help to identify where information can be found. Um, and then as I said, Don't quote me, but I believe there's seven standards in the ASR that have a related MIS report. And then there are the reports that um, are related, the report related to performance targets um, and indicators. And so the first standard is uh, 11A. And so that's looking at wanting narrative on your program eligibility criteria. And so there's, um, and I wanna just also say, I did not copy and paste everything from every um, standard in the ASR into the slide. So it will be really important to, you know, reference your, the ASR template as you're um, completing your report. But here it's asking basically for four, four bits of information. And so the first is that your site's eligibility criteria and that, again, is boilerplate language, which we've included in the ASR template um, under 11A. And so you literally will copy and paste that boilerplate language to put it into um, the text box that's highlighted in yellow, where it says clip, clip or tap here to enter text. I know it seems very redundant, but that way your narrative has all of the required information. Uh, the piece to this standard is how are the criteria selected? And so um, you all already have a defined service area. Part of what is important to look at in this standard when you're doing your ASR is for any changes to your defined service area. And so um, some things that you can look at. So um, your already defined service area, you can reference your work plan again to kind of just um, have some information you could probably copy and paste to include in your ASR. Um, but then you're also want to, it'll be helpful to take a look at some of those other sites that are listed in your ASR, this info, uh, vital statistics, demographics by county, those are listed in, um, right in the ASR. And the other place that, that may be helpful is a, a a long time ago now, Maggie did a presentation at one of the, um, I think it was one of the statewide leadership meetings, or it could have been a regional meeting. So you can find that in the site under that tab. Um, she kind of did a deeper dive into community statistics that you um, can also utilize. And so um, the other thing, again, you're going to want to do is like comparing your defined service area um, um one of the ways that you can do that is to look at the so I'm going to go to the next slide here you're going to look at the uh demo, program demographics report and so we can take a look at that report um, again, you know, we'll just, if you want to run that, Kareen, and we can take a look to kind of just show what demographics are included. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, this is the program demographics, and thank you again, um, Joe, for lending me your um, site. It is a um, report that has you know, default dates in there. But as you know, with every single report in the MIS, you can change these to um, whatever your contract is um, or your contract dates are. And so that you would run it that way and then just hit run. And hopefully um, the MIS will collaborate with me being so far away from home. 
and you would get um, this um, report that, as you can see, it did work. And um, you would now be able to take a look at, um, you know, different statistics and um, yeah. yeah. Can you can you see? Yeah. And then just to clarify too, like you'll want to run your. So it's really important, right? And I know we're always um reminding this, but in the MIS, you want to have um under your program information, you want to make sure you have the current um your current contractor in there. But then when you re run this report, for example, yeah. So Kareen's going to show you. Um, it's really important that you have the contract start dates in here. Um, so this is where you go to do that. And so um, then I'm going to stop sharing here for the year in review. So your ASR. Um, so for Joe, you know, you would want to run the year that you're looking at the data for. That makes sense to everyone. And then um, as Kareen um, had just shared that report, it just lists different demographics. And so some of the things that you'll want to kind of be thinking about are how do the demographics um, compare? So look at looking at the demographics of the families that are enrolled, is that aligning with your um, defined service area? you know, your target population. Um, are, are they aligning? Are they not aligning? So maybe there's a need to redefine your service area. And then also looking at those other reports um, that we have listed in the ASR for, you know, community data um, to kind of see are things changing compared to what you might have, the information you might have entered in your work. Plan. And of course, um, as a reminder for all of the standards, SR, you're also going to want to consider some of those DEIB um, focus questions and then other informal data um, that you may have um, from staff, from families enrolled, from advisory board members, community partners. So then the next um, standard um, is 11B. So that's looking at referring organizations. And so here we're asking for narrative. We're asking for you to share narrative on your identifying organizations um, within the community um, where you receive your referrals from. And then the related report will give you a list of your referring partners. And so, um, and I've listed in the slides, uh, you know, where you can get that um, report. We felt like, Right, we really don't need to share this unless folks really want us to, to show you this report. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory and it really just lists all of your sites referring organizations. And so then the next um, standard is um, 11C. That's tracking referrals and site capacity. And so this standard really is um, asking for a lot of information. And so um, we thought it would be helpful to kind of just break it down. So the first part um, is asking for the number of identified or referred by each referral, referral source and their eligibility status. And so again, that can be found in this 11C referral source outcome summary report. Um, so if you want to show that, Kareem, Absolutely. and then as she's pulling that up, it's important to remember for this year, we're in a transition year. So the report is going to show some two-step information as well. But by this time next year, obviously it, it won't. Melanie, again, this report, um, you see that it has default dates. So you want to look a year back. So for each program, you have to select your contract year to run the report and so that you get the the you know the date according to your reports. So yes. thank you, Joe, again. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the things that I, I may have missed some, but I don't think I did, but I tried to include that in the notes. So for all of the reports that it requires you to put the contract year contract start and end dates for the year in review, I've listed that either on the slide or in the notes. And so um, things to kind of think about when you're looking and analyzing this report. Um, is so that so for example the number of referrals received from each uh, source compared to the number of referrals that turned into enrollment so I don't know Kareen you want to pick one to look at and then we'll look well, at children I, I oh, always I always start from the left hand corner from the left um column and go, and work backwards because you basically want to see Okay, from all the referrals that you might have received, and again, they're all listed. So you could go to the end of the report and get the summary of them all. And I'm going to try and do that, just that um, and see whether it works. But um, basically, you would get, you know, the left, the, the column here on the left and work yourself. So for example, you would say, okay, this here we have the 100%, here we have the 100%. And so what, what happened? What is good about that? What did we do with this referral source that might be different to another one where you might have, you know, a large number or a big number, just like, you know, the WIC here, where you have like 14 referrals that came from them. But, you know, even though, 13 of them continued to screen and um, four of them ended up being negative. And there were, you know, 12 others that were positive. And yet, you know, uh, after being assigned and working with them and whatever, um, it ended up, you know, giving you just um, a 30% um, result. So that is, okay, where you would think, is it worth it, you know, like getting these, working with these referral sources or should I be looking at somebody else pretty much? Should I be working or trying? Um, why is it, you can ask the questions as to like, you know, and, and we know the hardships with WIC. Um, so that's like not, not a big surprise, but you know, like you might say, okay, let me try and focus on another service referral that seems to be giving me, you know, good um, families that are a good fit and maybe work more with that kind of referral source than with, you know, um, continuing to struggle with ones that end up not working with your... Yeah, and then the other, some other... Um things that you could look at. So like looking at your referrals are, are do you have a lot that are listed there in your report where you didn't receive any referrals? And mm -hmm. so um, would that, what would be some action steps to take from there? So um, maybe, maybe what that be like more in-person um, uh, kind of in services or, you know, it, it with those referral sources listed, opportunity to strengthen those relationships or maybe there was staff turnover at those places and so they're no longer aware of your healthy families program in the community so you know those are some of the things that you can take a look at um and then to clarify the piece because in a right we're asking about the number of families identified and their eligibility status and so for that you would look at what number of positive screens and enter that information. Oh, I know why. It looks like my screen froze. Let's see here. There you go. Okay. Um, and of course, again, like considering the DEIB focus questions, informal data, you know, like I would sharing, you know, is there opportunity to or need to maybe develop new relationships um, with new 
community partners, especially if you're seeing that um, your the enrolled don't really necessarily align um, with your defined service area. So still looking at one c um, like we said, we wanted to break it down a little bit more. And so on the report or reports that you're going to reference to answer um, B, C, D, and then some of E, um, we'll look at the capacity building report and then the eight quarter report. Um, so first we'll look, let me go here. We're going to look um, specifically at the eight quarter report. So if you want to pull that up, Kareen. I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, so I am and then gonna... yeah, and then again, um, really important to enter your contract start and end dates um for the year review before running the report. So I'm so that there is some data. I'm running it for the third quarter, Joe, um, so that we have some information there. The quarter that just ended for you. Okay. So um so can you run the third quarter, Kareen, or and or and or put in the contract year in review and it'll give you the same data you um so you can select from here which quarter you're going to run right and so i'm doing this so that there is data there the last um okay. the, the the there um joe seems to be in the car no it doesn't it doesn't make Yes, Joe just started his fourth quarter. So that means that they're, you know, I could I could do it that way. Um Okay. Yes. Uh so so then in looking at this report for B, where we're asking the number of enrolled families at the beginning of the contract period, you're gonna go, I'll wait till it comes up. Oh. No. It had to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So for everybody to know, I'm visiting my dad in Argentina. <laughs> and so that's why it's like very, like it's a difference. And I'm working with just one laptop when I'm accustomed to working with three, three screens generally. So that's why I'm struggling, but you know, we're going to get through it. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Kareen. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we can look here um, for the number of enrolled families at the beginning of the country. Period. So you're going to go down to um, number four. Um, it, all the way to the left where it says um, it says families enrolled at beginning of quarter. And so then you're going to go to number four and then the fifth column over because that's the um, this report splits, you know, separates into eight quarters. So you're going to look at the first quarter of the contract year in review. And so that's your number, 76. That's how many families were enrolled at the, at the beginning of contract year in review. And then for C, how many families were discharged? You're going to go to line six. And then you're going to add the number of discharges for all four quarters of your year in review, right? So you would add um, six, 10, 10. Nope. Nope, that's not right. Seven, I'm on the wrong line. So you'd add 75, 76, 85, 86. Now, oh, I'm confusing you guys. It is number six. So families discharged, you would add six, 10, and zero, which would mean 26 families were discharged during that contract year in review. 
And then for D, that's looking at the number of families um, enrolled at the end of the contract period. That's where you're going to go to line seven and you go to the eighth column, which would be 86. So 86 families were enrolled at the end of that contract period. And thank you, Dan. I see your comment. This information is also um, in another report called Program Caseload. Okay. And um, so the last piece of information that this uh, standard is asking for is to analyze the data and describe your plan with specific strategies to fill available slots or reduce gaps in service avail availability for the upcoming year. Oh, I need to share. There we go. So one, so the capacity bill report, that is going to give you some information that will be helpful, um, you know, in developing strat your strategies to fill available slots. Won't be just this report but all the other information that you've looked at for, for this standard. And so um, if you want to pull that up, Kareem. Yeah. Um, okay. And so here... Um, and a lot of you may, um, you know, recognize we put um, information, this kind of information in your um, site visit reports. And so here you're going to want to look at, so if you look at the box where it says strategic plan to reach capacity. What yeah, that Joe, does Joe's program was not a good one <laughs> to show in this sense, because Joe, you're over capacity. Um, but basically, right. let me just go mm -hmm. to my... Normally you wouldn't see negative numbers there, yeah. <laughs> but what it's showing you is um, the number of referrals you would need per month. Look yeah. at the in 12 months column. So yeah. it's showing you the number of referrals you would need per month in order to reach your contracted capacity. So not New York state target, but your contracted capacity within 12 months. So it looks like you went to a different a yeah, I, I decided to show you the other report where you can see, because it's it's always good to compare this strategic plan. And we always say, take your time, look at it in the long run. You Nobody's, you know, like wanting you to do this like um, in three months. Um, but if you look at um, the 12 month one and compare it to what's going on in your you know, last three months or most recent information just to see, okay, this is what currently has happened and this is what we need. So that would might give you an idea of how to plan and try to be strategic about doing, you know, getting referrals, getting positive screens out of that, which, you know, like there's so much you can um, prepare for, but that would be looking at these numbers to see, you know, um, okay, how many enrolled families? And again, this is fake data, so the numbers might not look good, but you should look at your own data and take a look at, okay, of those enrolled referrals, you know, um, how many of those ended up being positive and how many did get contacted and work done with that, you know, engagement process to try and get the families to enroll. So that is how you would work with this one if you weren't Joe, right? Sorry, you, you cut out a little bit there, Kareem. But yes, I think what you're saying is you, you know, you would look at, okay, like it's saying that I, to reach capacity in 12 months, I need to receive um, nine positive screens each month. And then, right, you'd go up and look at that set. The other section Kareen showed 
and it's showing zero. And so you, you know, part of your plan um, would include increasing the number of screens. And part of how we'll do that is outreach to we've identified, you know, if changes in your popul your target population, then you might talk about or look at other partners that you could um, work to establish new relationships with. And so, you know, your strategies are going to depend on, you know, the uniqueness of your community and any changes that are occurring there. Okay, I got to share again. It's a dance today. <laughs> okay, and so that. Um, lastly, so we're still on um, 11C, and so another report that can be helpful, um, you know, in terms of developing strategies uh, is the quarterly engagement summary report. Um, and so I will you. open it. I will open it. Give me a second because uh -huh. I'm going to open the. Um... Okay. freeze if oh no, no maybe you <laughs> it says that it's loading there it went okay good so here um just some examples of what you could look at so um you could look at the list of families uh where engagement efforts were terminated and consider whether whether the efforts used to engage families Effective. And so here, I think it's down, I think it's down further. We had said that we would look at the summary of referral outcomes to try and see what that was. Um, and then we would look at. Yeah, so. Um, so a lot like, so, so for example, programs often use phone calls, text messages, emails. And so here it lists, I thought that there was a place where, yes. it, yeah. So here there's 148, um, there were 148, um, engagement log activities, either phone calls, text messages, or emails to parent. And so look here and say, okay, does that seem um, to be effective? And then I feel there's another part in the report where you can compare that, right, Kareen? You can look to see at the results oh. here, like to see, okay, for each one of the cases, what happened and um, take a look. And um, this is a very long report, I think. Is this the one? No. So it... Oh. Am I, are you not listening to me? No, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can, I can hear you. It's just cut. It's, it's cutting out a little bit. Sorry about it that. It says your bandwidth is low. I know. That's okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay. It's okay. So I, I think, yeah, here. Um, oh, maybe it's up, up more. It's where I was showing you. It's here. Okay. Yeah. And then can you scroll down to the next there? Uh, set next right here. Okay. Yeah. I was just looking to see if you, if that was the place where you could compare. Um, no, that is yeah. the referral form um, summary, which is different to this one. Okay. 
Um, and yeah, and then oh, as Karine was saying, you can look at um, the specific families and reasons for refusal. Um, mm -hmm. So if you had a high number of participants that refused, you could go back and look at that family specifically, see if there's a you know, reason listed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, right, um, you know, a lot of times the parent refuses and you don't ever find out why. Um, but again, that could also be an opportunity to say, is there a way that we can better contact families who refuse um, to get that information? All right, let me share again. And then again, uh, the last piece. So um, we are asking in 11C to please be sure to include how the demographic and social factors of the families enrolled compared to your program's defined service area. And so this is absolutely a repeat of 11A, but it's also applicable here. And so I want to just take another look at that report, um, maybe from a little bit of a different perspective. Again, um, just to see are there are there, um, you know, demographics, like, can you just, you know, what those demographics, um, and include that information here on, you know, what, what could be helpful looking at that information again, to inform some strategies, um, may need to develop to increase, um, referrals and your overall site capacity. We already looked at that report, so we don't need to look again. So then the next standard is um, one to b That's the initial engagement process. Um, the report related here is um, initial engagement process report. Again, you're going to want to enter your contract start dates. And then in this, in the ASR, we're asking you to include just the first page of that report. So it's a lengthy report, but we just want you to upload that first page. And so um, we'll go to that report. And that first page, once we get to that, you'll see it's um, going to give you um, the data for all of those um, bullets that we're asking. So there in that the top row, um, you know, is is the information that you need. And then that bottom part, the reason, um, reasons why services were not heard, you can also get from this report. And then the remaining info in this report um just breaks down the information per referrals received in the time period. Okay, so I have to share my screen again. <laughs> yeah. And then one, two, C, I'm looking at the initial engagement process and then we're asking for narrative. And so um, we looked at the engagement process report. And so, um, as we said, the first page will be the data to provide narrative on the bullets up above um, last um, slide. And then the remaining data breaks down the information peripherals received. Um, so this is really the, you know, the analytical piece. So how do the timeframes look? How successful is your team at establishing first contact with families? What are the reasons why families aren't being offered services? Um, continue your exploration by asking yourself and your team, does anything surprise you? What strategies can you explore? Is the process materials accessible uh, families? What's the best way to keep track of this work? And again, as always, the DEIB focus questions can also help 
um, you know, developing strategies. And then another um, report that can be helpful, um, it is not listed in the ASR. It's not required for you to run the report, um, but you could run the referral form information report to deeper into helping develop strategies um, <clears throat> to address any challenges you identify uh, with initial engagement. And so this is the report, um, Corrine, if you wanted to run, where we can look at the contact attempt summary and contact attempt details to just give you a better idea of how, how much engagement was done with the families. And I was going to suggest that we don't do it, but I can do it um, because everybody might know how to, and I am more return to Carola. So um, this is the referral. This one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. Yeah, we had it. So, yeah, like if you you can scroll down to the contact attempt summary, I'm saying in general programs can. Yes. Um, <laughs> and compare to contact attempt details. So it. It'll show you the number of attempts, you know, to contact families. And then out of those numbers of attempts, how many were successful in attempting that family or in um, reaching out that family. So here we go. Um, phone the parent, 296 attempts. Out of 196 attempts, 138 were successful. So again, this is just uh, an example of how you could use this report to take a little bit of a deeper dive and say, okay, so that's what my math is terrible, maybe a quarter of the. Um, yeah, on the other successful. hand, there's not, you know, there's not much that you can do, but, you know, like, um, if you look at the visits conducted with parents out of five visits, you know, all five were successful. So that is, you know, something that, oh, you might say, yeah, we look into like knocking on the door kind of thing mm -hmm. um, compared to, you know, the phone calls or text messages that even though you're trying hard, um, the numbers, you know, uh, are lower. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, because I know we only have an hour, so I'm going to keep yeah. moving. <laughs> so the next is um, the um, acceptance rate and retention rate. And so these, this 14A and 34A in the ASR are really just asking um, for narrative on the definition of acceptance rate and retention rate. And so this, again, is another place there's that boilerplate language, and it's included right in the ASR. And so I know it seems like so and redundant, but if you just copy and paste what we've included as the boiler language in the ASR and put it into your text box, that, that highlighted yellow, um, that will suffice. You'll have what you need um, for, for accreditation. And so the next uh, two slides are about acceptance analysis and then retention analysis. And we aren't gonna pull these reports. Um, again, a reminder that um, Dr. Margolik, she did a presentation at the May um, statewide leadership meeting. Um, and that presentation is embedded in your ASR. So you can just on that little um, icon there in the ASR, and it'll pull up that presentation. You can access it through the website. Um, so those two reports, um, you know, you'll use the the report for accepted analysis and then retention rate and analysis. And then on um, the 
report that can be helpful again is that quarterly engagement summary, which we've already looked at. Uh, and again, I included here in the notes, but this is part of the presentation as well, just specifics on um, how to date, you know, how to run the dates that you input to get a one year analysis. So the next um, is the section of the ASR are the performance targets. And so um, you can look at this, this, the, the HFA is asking specifically for narrative on the well child care visit. And so for that piece, you can run the quarterly performance target um, report. And this is another report that we speak to in length, uh, in detail in your um, site visit reports. Um, but you can run that. Um, you have to make sure that you're putting um, the last completed quarter for the time period in review. Um, so Kareen's going to show that. Full disclosure, when I first started, I, I can't even count the number of times that I reached out to Kareen for her to help me again and again on how to do these dates. So it's really confusing, but. Um, yeah, but, um, I'm I'm going to go avoid ahead. that. And if anybody struggles with it, you can you can reach out to me. Um, but usually what you would do is um, you would put in the, the dates in the MIS start or with I always start with the end date and then I go backwards so if you run it for your quarter ending in you know whatever it is like here I ran it for 11 30 2023 so then I know that it'll go back four quarters going back okay so we're gonna have um the correct um um and this is um data that we do we you know we did from the this is a report that I prepared uh, from the um test site so there's not a lot here and so you see the HD4 isn't looking that good but mm -hmm. um I hope everybody is looking a bit better in their own yeah and so that we're just going to show you kind of how you did each quarter throughout the year in review and no, and then the 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 remaining pieces, you know, you're going to want to be talking to staff those in for that informal data, maybe community partners on, you know, just getting more and including narrative on, you know, what have been the barriers and, and what are some strategies to address those barriers. Um, and then the other piece that we're asking for you to provide narrative on for the targets um, is just narrative on barriers identified mm -hmm. um, for the performance targets that you're not meeting. So we're not asking you to list out um, each target and how you did throughout the year. We just want you to provide some narrative on any barriers you've identified with meeting certain performance targets. Um, and another important piece to that is, um, and this is in you know the DEIB focus um, section, is you know, being mindful of what it's maybe aren't realistic um, for your target population, for your community. So, you know, for example, we know some programs have a, a pretty significant percentage of undocumented um, families. And so um, it may be unrealistic to expect that, you know, they're going to have a GED or so of those performance targets may not be attainable um, for the families in your community. And so, you know, it's kind of looking at, you know, what, what performance targets that we haven't been meeting or that we're having, that we're challenged to meet, what, what do we want to work on? Um, because you don't want to be working towards something that's ultimately not attainable for your families in your community. And so um, the next are performance indicators, and there is no MIS report on here. Although, well, you can know that they. Can, I know we on our end can run a report 
show us the performance indicators for all programs. Um, but that's not available, I don't, to you guys. So you, here, what you you'll can, do... Uh, sorry, Melanie, but remember the Tableau, um, because that dashboard gives you the history of each one's own... Um, you know, history of the PI. So that is something that if you're still um, having troubles logging in and checking out, please reach out to us and we can help you with that. But um, basically, um, yes, we, we, we don't have it just now on the MIS for you to um, take a look at. Yeah. And you said the tableau, right? Yes. Um, and so you could look at that. Also, you can look at, <clears throat> you know, we run the performance indicators twice a year. And so um, depending on what, you know, your contract year in review, you can take a look at those two skills. Um, and then again, we just want you to share um, for each indicator achieved, what factors do you attribute this success to for each not achieved, any steps taken to identify barriers strategies developed, strategies implemented. Um, next is I4A. So this is just asking for um, narrative on the program's most recent efforts to um, gather feedback from parents, caregivers, and staff. And so you're gonna use that information um, and that part, this information, you're gonna enter it in this section of the ASR. Um, but then you're also going to um, include a summary of this section um, in 54B, and we'll go to that slide next in just a minute. Um, the quarterly worker characteristics report is also helpful here um, in looking at the demographics of your staff at the program and um, as it relates to identifying areas of strength and where the site has opportunity for growth as it relates to service equity. So for example, if you're looking at that report, do the demographics of staff align with demographics of the families enrolled in your program and for your target population? And if not, is there, you know, there what opportunities um, could you develop, what strategies to strengthen? That? And then this would could become part of um, what's in your equity plan. And so here, this is 54A. And so this is the place where you would put a summary of 54A in the um, actual equity plan, which we've embedded to the ASR. And so this box right here is um, in the 54B section of the ASR. And then I, we have, we are, I want to save time for questions. So. Um, I included a, a slide for the equity plan. And so I did send all of, send out an email to the field um, clarifying this information. So, um, but I also included it here. Um, so this is, there was a question specific around how do we um, speak to uh, the equity plan in the ASR if it's something we're active working on. Um, and so for the equity plan piece, you're gonna develop your equity plan this year based on looking, you know, all of the narratives that you're providing information for in each section of the ASR, and then also those DEI focus questions. And so that is what you're going to look at to help develop your equity plan. And then for 54C, just here, um, this year, you're not going to be able to include any information on the review of your equity plan because you're just developing it this year, but you can include any information that you may have gathered when you shared your CAP or um, cultural analysis plan with your advisory board this past year. And you can put that in, there's a section in the um, equity plan, it has a box where it's asking and you'll see these, this exact language, you can put any feedback from your cap in that section. And then um, for staff retention and satisfaction, uh, you know, the narrative that we're asking for here for the staff satisfaction, a lot of that is going to come from your staff surveys. 
and informal data um, in working with your staff. And then for staff retention, uh, you're gonna, you can look at the worker characteristics report. That's going to give you some information um, like uh, who left, you know, uh, who was hired, when were they hired, who left during the time frame, their hire date, termination date, um, reason why they left, and, and any other characteristic. Um, so for retention, and then we're asking you to include strategies developed for staff retention based on what was learned um, from both your retention and satisfaction data. Um, and then the next is just, um, oh, this is supposed to say standard 10 and 11. Um, so I'll fix that before I send it out to all of you. Here, we are not asking list a uh, uh, to provide a list of all the trainings that all of your staff received. Um, you share a lot of that information in your quarterlies, but we really wanted you to um, just provide narrative on trainings that you felt were relative to your site's target population throughout the year. And then also um, narrative on any trainings provided related to child neglect and um, DEIB trainings. And then um, the last three um, pieces of narrative that we ask ASR are around the governance and administration. There are no reports for these standards, um, but I just listed here what we're asking for in each of those. And then just some reminders. So again, remember to consider DEIB focus questions in all parts of your narrative. Again, you don't have to answer every single one, but you should be considering those because they're really going to help to inform um, your site's equity plan and what, what you can do to strengthen that. Um, and then just in general, we acknowledge there's been a lot of changes to the ASR template. Um, we are, as shared um, in the last accreditation around the ASR, we are not opposed to making up um, so please continue and feel free to send feedback um, to me. Um, and if we feel like, yeah, there is some opportunity to make this better, we'll look to after accreditation. Um, but in the meantime, do your best to complete the ASR. Um, it will be submitted to your OCFS contract manager who will review it and um, you know make sure that all required narratives are in there. And if not, they're gonna reach out to you um, to give you some TA around that and ask that you, you know, make it um, so that when it is uploaded uh, into SharePoint um, for accreditation, you can um, rest assured that all of the information required is in there. Um, and just to clarify, I know there have been questions about can programs modify their ASR report? And so, um, yes, can for purposes of if you want to share with your agency or your advisory board, um, but you do have to make sure that all of the things that are required to be in the ASR are in there when you um, kind of reformat it. Um, and the ASR that you submit to us does have to be on that template that we're using. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, another just helpful reminder mm -hmm. that um, in the ASR, if you go into the search box and you type in ASR in the search box, it's going to create a list of all the reports that are going to be helpful to you um, to, in completing the ASR. So I know we didn't leave much time, but I don't have anything after this, so um, I can um, to answer any questions. So folks have questions, and I'll look at the chat. So first, let's go to the first question. Well, Roxanne says, say hi to your dad, Kareen. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so Stacy was asking if there's a copy of these slides or if we'll be getting a copy. And so, yes, this was recorded and will be... Um, 
I can send the PowerPoint out in an email. Um, I'll save it as a PDF and send it that way. But then we'll also up on to um, the HFNY website. Oh, you already answered that. Sorry, you're ahead of me. Um, and so um, Emily has a question um, for one C uh, PM program manager and community advisory board work effectively. Is that looking for anything more specific than the site's policy for how the PM partners with the cab? So you you certainly can include what you've um, already included in your policy, um, but then any additional information on what that actually looks like um, for you at your site um, with your advisory board throughout the the in review. Um, does that help to answer your question, Emily? Oh, yes, thanks, she said. Um, so, okay, any other questions? I, I guess you can always, you know, once you, for those who haven't started yet, you know, if you get questions while you're uh, doing it, you can always reach out. Yeah. Um, I know we're at time, but, and, and, you know, that's okay if there are any questions. Like Kareen said, you can always reach out to um, any of us. Um, you can um, ask questions in your um, office hours cohorts. Um, we're here if you have any questions. And then, you know, just a reminder that you, you know, when, when you're um, starting to draft your SR, you're going to want to look at the template because I didn't include all, all of the information we're asking um, in this PowerPoint. Um, reference both while you're drafting, um, you really should have all the information that you need. Okay, well, if there are any other questions, I'll let you all um, go enjoy the rest of your day.